Hello, I'm Richard Nongard, and I'm the Executive Director of the International Certification Board of Clinical Hypnotherapists. In the world of hypnosis education and treatment, the concept of glove anesthesia is not a new one. The name is derived, of course, from helping a client to create the sensation of anesthesia, that's the condition of having sensation or feeling blocked in a very specific part of the body, in this case the hand as if one were wearing an anesthetic glove. Anesthesia is different from analgesia in that analgesia is the relief of pain, think of an aspirin, rather than a blocking of sensation. Being able to create anesthetic phenomena through hypnotic suggestion is a useful tool in medical hypnotherapy including pain management, dental uh, hypnotherapy, uh, pre-surgical preparation, or even simply as a profound convincer of the ease and depth of the hypnotic process. Now, each person is a little bit different and they respond to different processes and suggestions in different ways. Some people have a more profound response than others. For a client who's not very kinesthetic, they might at first only feel some of the sensations suggested, but that's okay. Successive sessions will usually bring a greater level of experience. Often, those who struggle to feel kinesthetic suggestions like heaviness or warmth or coolness or other sensations become frustrated when at first they don't experience dramatic responses. But developing hypnotic response for some clients is like any other human activity, whether it's playing a guitar or becoming good at golf. It takes time and practice to experience the full benefit. Probably just as many people experience profound response to the suggestions for glove anesthesia as those who do have difficulty. In fact, it's been my experience that far more people experience profound results at first, noting the feeling of heaviness and relaxation, and then by following the suggestions I give, they easily experience the full impact of this exercise, often in a single session. And so by learning here, how to experience glove anesthesia, you can practice the techniques and you can learn from this pra process by practicing using this video on a regular basis. Now to begin, find a comfortable chair where you can relax and take some time for yourself. During this session you'll be creating an experience in learning, an experience where you can discover the potential within you for controlling your own body's response sensations and experience. By sitting in a chair rather than lying on the floor you'll be able to avoid falling asleep. Hypnosis after all is not sleep but rather a state in this case of deep physical relaxation coupled with increased self-awareness. By uncrossing your arms and legs and resting your hands on your lap or on the armrests of the chair you'll be ready to begin. And begin this exercise by closing your eyes, by scanning your body, and anywhere you're uncomfortable or unsettled, you can simply choose to readjust, essentially become more comfortable. And with your eyes closed, you can scan any muscles of the body for any place where you're holding the obvious tension of the day. If you notice tension in the brow or shoulders or the back, release that tension and let those muscles relax. Now bring your attention to your breath. As you breathe in and breathe out, notice your chest rise and fall with each breath. Notice the tempo and quality of your breath. If you need to adjust for comfort to breathe more easily, it's perfectly okay. In fact, at any time during the session, if you need to move, itch, or adjust for comfort, it won't disturb you. In fact, it'll help you become more relaxed as you become more comfortable. Now, breathing is about the only thing we do from the first moment of life to the end of our life. What's interesting though is how most of us go through life without ever really focusing on a breath. As you breathe in and breathe out, focus on your breath. 
noting what it feels like to have your breath drawn in through your nostrils and noting that point where an in-breath turns around in the lungs and becomes an exhale. You don't need to try to speed up or slow down your breath. Just pay attention to it. Breathing in, breathing out. By focusing on the breath, you're able to focus inward, putting aside any distractions of the day or the world, or even the room outside of you, and to take a few minutes to better your own life by learning something new and experiencing something new. I'm going to take the next few moments to guide you through a series of relaxation exercises. First, we'll focus on relaxing the body and then the mind. During this process, you might find your mind wandering or thinking. That's perfectly okay. It certainly doesn't mean that you cannot experience hypnosis. After all, that's what minds do. They wander, they think. But if you should find that there's a distraction, either outside of the room or in your own wandering mind, you can simply return to your focus point, the breath. And when you pay attention to the breath, you'll find how easy it is to regain your focus by just observing your breath and focusing on you. We often carry tension of the day in our brow and in the eyes and in the little muscles of our face and jaw. Pay attention to those muscles, especially those in the brow and especially those around the eyes, and let them relax, releasing any tension they might hold. Notice also that by unclenching the jaw, you can relax the muscles of the cheeks and the chin. And although quite simple, this simple exercise, relaxing the muscles of the face can go a long way at helping you to release any tension during a busy or stressful day. Now, if you're in a desk chair or an armchair, rather than a recliner or another similar chair, you can relax the tension in your neck and shoulders by letting your chin drop towards your chest, taking the weight of your head off your shoulders and neck, noticing how the muscles become lengthened and relaxed. Of course, if you're in a recliner or another similar chair, and your head is supported by a pillow or the back of the chair, this is unnecessary but you can still relax those muscles of the shoulders and neck by just allowing the natural heaviness of relaxation to flow through those muscles in the upper body. Finding it quite comfortable and natural to take a few minutes to yourself to practice something new. Now let the experience of relaxation extend through your arms both the upper arms and the forearms, noticing the natural heaviness in the arms that relaxation brings. As you extend this sensation of relaxation into your hands, notice the feeling of heaviness in the palms and in the fingers as you let each muscle release any tension that remains. As you continue to relax, note your breath, smooth and rhythmic, each breath bringing with it a healing sense of relaxation. Notice how the breath has naturally become calm and relaxed, how the muscles of your back and chest can relax with each breath. As you extend the sensation of awareness, of relaxation into the muscles of the buttocks and thighs, sense the feeling of heaviness that relaxation brings. 
relaxing now, the muscles of the lower legs, the calves, the shins and the ankles. Feeling any remaining tension leave the body as even the toes relax. In fact, you can even wiggle your toes or open the toes, letting even the tiny muscles of each toe relax. Now notice how relaxation feels. Notice that it feels calm, not tense. Heavy, not light. Relaxation with each breath is calm, smooth, and rhythmic. And notice your regular heartbeat, smooth and rhythmic. How even without any effort or thinking about it, the heart rate has become calm and regular, smooth and rhythmic. You've done a great job to this point, creating a sensation of relaxation, the sensation of relaxation and heaviness and the feeling of calm. As easy as it is to create these sensations, you can begin to use these skills to create other feelings and sensations. Notice your eyelids. Each eyelid is controlled by tiny micro muscles that open and close many times throughout each day. But notice how good it feels to let even those tiny eyelid muscles relax, letting them become both relaxed and heavy. Notice your hands, how good it feels to just let them relax on your lap, heavy and relaxed. And how the feet and toes feel when they're totally relaxed, heavy and comfortable. And as easy as you can relax the body, you can also relax the mind. To this point, we've been focusing on physical relaxation. And you may have found the mind wandering or thinking. When this happened, did you focus on your breath, using it as a point to bring your attention inward when you noted the mind wandering or thinking? To fully relax the mind, just focus on the breath, setting aside anything either known or unknown, keeping you from fully benefiting from this experience. And with each breath, note how wonderful it feels to set aside the tasks of the day and spend some time increasing your self-awareness. With each breath, Double the sensation of relaxation, letting each breath take you into a deeper state of creativity and a more profound awareness of your internal experiences. Never asleep, but deeply relaxed. Each breath, in and out. Each breath, smooth and rhythmic. Now bring your attention to your hands. You created a feeling or sensation of heaviness in them by relaxing and letting yourself experience this process. And although both hands are present on your lap, each one is different. Perhaps your conscious mind is aware of the difference between the two hands. One might feel heavier and more relaxed than the other. Or perhaps one feels lighter or simply different than the other. You can try to discern the difference with the conscious mind if you would like to or you can stop trying to figure it out 
and just let your subconscious mind guide you, noting automatically that the left hand is the one you are attentive to, finding it to be the right choice for you. Or, perhaps you're drawn to the right hand, finding by choosing that one there is only one hand left. Of course, either way is fine. And even if you don't yet notice a difference, simply decide which hand will remain relaxed on the lap and which hand will be doing the work in this exercise. With the hand that will be doing the work, lift that hand and use the index finger to point to a spot on the back of the resting hand. Go ahead, touch the back of one hand with the working hand, and simply use your index finger to tap several times in the same spot on the back of the passive hand. Tap that same spot several times. Tap, 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 tap. And notice the sensation of being lightly tapped by one hand on the back of the other hand. Now return that working hand back to its resting place and let both hands rest. But continue to pay attention to the spot on the back of the passive hand where the feeling or sensation of being tapped was present. In that place, the size of your fingertip, or about the size of a dime, where you are tapping, use the creative part of your mind to experience the sensation of no sensation in that very spot where you were tapping. As easy as you can relax your muscles, or create heaviness, or regulate your own heartbeat, you can allow yourself to become aware of the sensation of no sensation in this small spot the size of a dime on the back of your hand. And now imagine the size of that place where the sensation of no sensation is present to become larger expanding to the size of a quarter resting on the back of your hand. Continue to let that awareness of the sensation of no sensation become larger, expanding to the size of an old half dollar or even to the size of an old time silver dollar. Feeling the fingers, feeling the palms, but sensing the sensation of no sensation in that place on the back of your hand the size of an old-time silver dollar. It's certainly remarkable how the creative part of the mind can focus on something that perhaps we've overlooked before. That being our capacity to focus on the absence of sensation or the sensation of no sensation at all. Now allow yourself to extend this awareness of the sensation of no sensation to the entire back of your hand. Noting that like the relaxation that started in our brow but eventually was experienced in all of your limbs and fingers, the sensation of no sensation can travel through each finger engulfing your entire hand in a comfortable awareness of the sensation of no sensation in that hand, no longer feeling heavy or light, no longer aware of anything in that hand except the sensation of no sensation over your entire hand, as if it were a glove of new awareness. 
feels wonderful to create this awareness, doesn't it? And now you can actually use that arm to move your anesthetized hand and bring your hand to any part of the body where you would like to transfer this awareness. You could simply move it to the top of the other hand or touch your knee or your temple or your other elbow or even to a place in your jaw that felt uncomfortable. Noting that by simply moving this hand and letting it touch this other place in our body, the awareness of the sensation of no sensation is easily transferred to this place too. Now move your arm and your hand back to where it began, resting on your lap. Noting this awareness of sensation, or rather the awareness of the absence of sensation, both in your hand and on the place that you've touched. Of course, none of these experiences and awarenesses that you've created today come from me, but rather from that place inside of your awareness that regulates your own experiences. What this means, of course, is at any time, anywhere, you can pay attention to your breath, to a state of relaxation, and then even to the sensation of no sensation anywhere in your body. And you can use this to change the way you feel any time you need. Of course, by touching a part of the body that's stressed or in pain, you can find relief. But the same process can be applied to emotional pain or discomfort. And if at any time you find your heart or your spirit is hurt, you can even create a protective sensation of no sensation in this place, the heart, the solar plexus, the spirit giving yourself time to begin an emotional healing and the ability to manage emotions or feelings that previously might have been too painful to manage. And over the next few days and weeks, revisit this exercise several times a week to practice the process of increasing your awareness not only of discomfort, but of comfort, altering perceptions and experiencing new things, even the sensation of no sensation. It is time now to reorient to your time and place into the room around you. Pay attention to your hands, both of them relaxing. Notice a sense of lightness in both of them. Notice that lightness in the feet and a sensation of lightness in the eyelids. Of course, you know you could open your eyes right now if you wanted to. But wait a moment. Continuing to enjoy this state that you've created. In a moment, ready to return to a vibrant and energetic you empowered by new learning. And now I'm going to count from one to three. Will each number become more alert and more awake, ready to experience the rest of the day? One, take in a deep breath Letting oxygen reach every cell of the body. Two. Choosing to retain a sensation of comfort in your body, mind and spirit. While stretching out any muscles that need to be stretched. Three. 
feeling fantastic, opening the eyes, ready to use. These new learnings in each and every way, each and every day, in a way that's truly beneficial to you. If you'd like more information about the application of clinical hypnosis, upcoming webinars to increase your skills or resources for self-hypnosis, please take a moment and visit our website, subliminalscience.com. If you found this exercise helpful to both understand and experience hypnotic phenomena, visit our discussion forum at www.icbchforum.com. If you found this experience easy, continue to practice, allowing yourself to go into an even deeper awareness or sensation of no sensation and discovering on your own applications of glove anesthesia that can be beneficial to you. If you're one who had more difficulty than most, this of course does not mean that you can't do it or that you can't do hypnosis. After all, this is only one of many exercises and techniques that one might use. And most find that by practicing the techniques over a period of time, several times a week for a few weeks, kinesthetic acuity can actually be developed and increase. The music that you heard during this time was created by Dan Kern at www.a1subliminal.com. Again, I'm Richard Nongard, and I hope that this brief learning experience has been helpful to you.